glory to Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. We thank you, Lord, for the breath of life. We thank you, Lord, that you have added this day even to the length of our life. We are not better than anybody else, Lord. We are frail. And you were even asked, Lord, in the word, tell me the length of my life, the number of my days, that I may know how frail I am. We are nothing before you, Lord. You could have made servants for yourself out of rocks, and yet you have laid eyes upon us that we be your servants, useless servants, for your glory. And so we come before your throne, Lord, as you have opened the way for us to make it before you. And we kneel and we bow before your excellency. We thank you for all things. We repent of our iniquity. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Yehoshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior, the Almighty. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for guiding us and teaching us about your word. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, we take a moment to dive into the waters of the word and just bask in the Lord's presence. Amen. And I will be sharing with you some things that have been uh, communicated to me as I was reading the book of Malachi, uh, one of my favorite books in the Bible, uh, because it really summarizes well the issues that we have towards God and how we must serve him, but sometimes come up short. Malachi chapter one. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? And so the Lord loves us. The Bible tells us that he has loved us first and that we are loving him back. When we receive his love, we love him in return. But he is the one who has loved us first. And he has laid eyes on us, not by any works that we have done, but simply because he is love. First John 4, 8, God is love. And he has chosen us. We have not chosen him. We learn in the Gospel of John. I have chosen you. And 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 teaches us that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Amen. And so it is the Lord who has chosen us. And yet we have the audacity to ask the Lord, who not only has chosen us and given us of his spirit, sometimes we ask him, Lord, are you really there? Are you really watching over my life? And so here the people answer the Lord, where the Lord has said, I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, yet ye say, meaning ye ought not to say it, but ye murmur still. Just like the people were murmuring in the desert, have you taken us out of Egypt so that we die in the desert? Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. And so we learn something interesting here about the love of the Lord. Even brethren, brethren born of the same mother and the same father, Esau and Jacob have the same father, the same mother, and yet the love of the Lord will fall upon one of them, meaning that even if you have people who are closely related one to another, the Lord's love is such that he can choose to favor one of the two. And we will find that the nature of the two can be very different. In the beginning, Adam and Eve, they had two sons, Cain, Cain, and Abel. And we are told that Cain was of the wicked one. And therefore, Cain succumbed to the temptations of the devil and his offering before the Lord was not found to be pleasant, where Abel's offering was found to be pleasant. And we're told in 
1 John 3.12, that the reason why Cain slew Abel is because the works of Abel were righteous and the works of Cain were not. And so we see that the same parents, they can have children, and in these, amongst the children, even if there be two, one can be of the devil and the other of the Lord. And so there was eventually Jacob and Esau. And we see that the Lord made a difference between the two as to who would be the chosen one serving him and who would not be. And that is Esau. And when you end up not being a beneficiary of the love of the Lord, then are you hated? Verse 3 reads, And I hated Esau. And we also discover the consequences of being hated by the Lord. What are they in the case of Esau? And laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. And so there was not going to be an opportunity for Esau to continue to build, to continue to build an heritage to leave unto his lineage. We remember in Ecclesiastes, the Lord says that there is a man who will work hard and have a son, and yet there will be no inheritance that will come in the hands of the son. He will not inherit anything. And so the work of a man's hand can be destroyed. He can work hard and labor very hard and end up with nothing because what he accumulates is destroyed by the Lord. In Haggai chapter 1, the Lord points out to the people, I am chastising you, and you are collecting money in a bag full of holes. You're trying to amass, but I make sure that everything that you have, that you cannot enjoy it, that you would have vineyards but not drink from them, vineyards but no wine. And I believe in the book of Joel chapter 1, it is said that they have vineyards and they don't drink from them and that there is no oil. In other words, in the image of trees that have their bark stripped from them, leaving them naked, so the people spiritually are naked. Because like trees that have been stripped naked of their bark, the people have been stripped naked of the glory of the Lord because they have turned from him because some are hated of him. In the case of Esau, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. And your eyes shall see, and ye shall say, the Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. Wow. We must fear the Lord. Edom saith, we are impoverished, meaning they recognize the situation that they're in, but... They think they can return and build the desolate places, but not so. In the book of Nahum, chapter 1, the Lord says, What do you imagine against the Lord? Affliction shall not rise up the second time. Meaning, once the Lord has established, once the Lord has decided that he will pronounce and declare judgment upon a nation, and that it is a final one, there is no getting around it. The people in Edom, though they have will to rebuild, they will find out that the desolation that has struck them is final, and that there's no getting back up. And so there is a time when the mercy of the Lord comes to an end. We remember in Jonah chapter 4, how the Lord is merciful towards the people of Nineveh, and explains in chapter 4 to Jonah 
These people I have created, I have created all things. And if they don't know their left from their right, should I not try to show them the light and give them an opportunity to turn towards the light? Where Jonah would have condemned these people saying that they were not necessarily worthy of salvation in his eyes. Thinking and estimating in his own mind that these people were not worthy of salvation according to his own justice, Jonah's justice, but the Lord had mercy to at least give them a chance to come to repentance, which they did wear sackcloth and go on a fast when Jonah warned them about the wrath of the Lord that would have been to come. And so we find out that when we are hated of the Lord, he can destroy the work of our hands, the fruit of our labor, where Ecclesiastes teaches us that it is actually the hand of God and the gift of God that a man may find whatsoever he findeth to do under the heaven with all his might and simply enjoy the fruit of his labor because it is his portion under the sun. And here he tells us, the Lord, that he can take that away. And so there is the love of the Lord. But when we are not chosen or when we are disqualified, then are we hated. And it is a terrible thing to fall in the hands of the Almighty. It is a terrible thing to be an enemy of God because we have chosen to be a friend to the world, as James teaches us in chapter 4 of his general epistle. And also we have this aspect that the Lord, when he renders judgment, it is made in a public way to where now you are truly naked and exposed and the people can see your desolation. The people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever, this is how they shall be called. The border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever, they shall be called that way by those who hear about their mishap, by those who see what happened to them. And by way of this sentence having been rendered, the world will come to fear the Lord because they will see what he is able to do to those who are hated. And so when such judgments are rendered, when punishment is laid down according to the Lord's judgment, it is also for others to see it and to fear. If we look at 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 20, them that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear. So there is this idea that when you have done wrong, when you are an enemy of God, when you are hated, you will be rebuked before all so that others may fear, so that others may see what happened to you and know to fear the Lord who is almighty and can inflict damage and can deliver a sentence upon others, upon trespasses, because he does not acquit the wicked. And so in verse 5 of Malachi chapter 1, And your eyes shall see, and ye shall say, the Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. Others will fear. And so Timothy, 1 Timothy 5.20 reminds us that we also have to let transgressors know that there is a rebuke associated with rebellion, and it is public so that others may fear. Jude also touches on that. If we go to Jude, verse 5, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Verse 7, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, 
are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. And so on the one hand, we have the people of the Lord who were taken out of Egypt, but then were destroyed for unbelief, most of them. And then we have the case of the angels who rebelled against the Lord and kept not their first estate, but left their habitation to go and do mischief on the earth with the women that they found beautiful. And they have been judged and are reserved in everlasting chains in darkness unto the day of judgment. And lastly, in Sodom and Gomorrah, those cities that were sinful, for an example, they were destroyed. And so again, going back to Malachi chapter 1, verse 5, your eyes shall see the desolation that is of Edom, who is hated, and ye shall say the Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. And so we see that the Lord is love, and he has chosen a number of people to be his people. He would have wanted all to come to salvation, but not everybody will accept him. And so there are people who will be enemies of God, and there are people who will be his friends. Now, it is not by anything that we have done that we are in his good favor. So the Lord, we have seen that he can love us, but also that there are those who are hated. And we saw the burden that comes with being hated or becoming an enemy of God. He can destroy the heritage of a man. And make it so, this sentence cannot be overturned. It is a final decision without appeal. And where you would try to get back up, it is not possible to do so. They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. Your name now becomes words of condemnation. That's how they shall be called. You see, the Bible teaches us that a name, a name is more important than precious ointments with a good standing attached to it to have a good report. But here their inheritance and their name is marred. That is Edom. And so we will read the whole thing yet again. Malachi chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. They were the chosen people. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? You have here ungratefulness. They don't realize the privilege of having had the Lord lay eyes on them. Was not Esau Jacob's brother? saith the Lord, yet I loved Jacob. Two brothers, I could have chosen either one. Aren't you glad that I chose you? And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. And your eyes shall see, and ye shall say, the Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel you will learn fear of the Lord. It is written in Isaiah that when the Savior will come, the Mashiach, a son is born to us, and he will be strong in the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so we have found out about the consequences attached to the fact that you are either loved by the Lord, chosen, or that you're hated. Many are called but few are chosen. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, 
which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. That's First Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. And even though it applies to the church uh, concerning the new covenant, as we are speaking here in Malachi about the old covenant, we can still make the analogy here in terms of the church being made up of saints that are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people, which in time past were not a people, meaning that in time past, they had not walked into the love of the Lord to be pleasant unto him and his people. That's why the Lord will say concerning the Gentiles, I have been found by a people who were not seeking me, and those who were not my people have become my people. There were people who were distant from the Lord, that may have been part of the nations that the Lord hated originally, but they have come into the perfect love of the Lord because he has chosen to take them out of darkness and bring them into the light. And so they are chosen. They had not obtained mercy, now they have. And the same mercy is, by analogy, the mercy that Jacob had when he was chosen amongst two brothers of the same parents. Likewise, Abel, he was chosen amongst two brothers of the same parents. And so Jacob ought to be grateful and rejoice about the fact that the Lord laid eyes on him. Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Said the Lord, yet I loved Jacob. And so what had Jacob done? that he would deserve this, the grace and the mercy of the Lord, the love of the Lord. We have to appreciate it and be thankful every day. This is why we need to worship him. And those who are hated of the Lord, we see how their heritage, their inheritance is marred and destroyed. Just as the tower that men were trying to build in the beginning, it was struck down. It was struck down, and there was no way that they were going to build it again, that they were going to continue with that project. Affliction was not going to rise the second time. And this also can be connected to pride, how some individuals being so proud come to a point where the Lord decides to destroy them and bring them down from where they are. Let us go to Obadiah, starting at verse 1. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. When the Lord hath saith, he hath saith it. And likewise here in Malachi chapter 1, they shall build, but I will throw down. And where they say we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places, thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build. They shall build, but I will throw down, saith the Lord of hosts. Let us also go concerning pride. Uh, we have here an image of Lucifer, uh, who becomes Satan. We have an image through the king of Tyrus about what happened to Lucifer. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 1. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, 
I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man, and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten the riches, and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man, and no God, in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. I have spoken it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have said thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stone of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty, thus corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. And so we see the public nature of the judgment that is laid upon the prince of Tyrus, that is laid upon Lucifer by analogy. And here in Malachi chapter 1, we saw that Edom though they would want to rebuild, though they would want their places to no longer be desolate, thus saith the Lord of hosts, that they shall build, but the Lord will throw down, and that they will be called by everyone who has seen this, the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. And it will be seen, their downfall will be manifest, and by the fear caused by these things, the Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. And as Jude pointed out, these things happen so that all may come to fear the name of the Lord. 
And so there you have it, brothers and sisters. We have been discussing these first five verses of the first chapter of Malachi. We come to understand that we must fear the Lord and where he gives his love and where he showers us with love. Let us be thankful. Let us be grateful. And let us not become enemies of God by being friends of this world because God reserveth wrath for his enemies. We are the chosen ones. Alleluia. We give glory to the almighty Jesus Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior, the one who fights for us, who is our rock, the one who is our shield, the one even who has conquered death. When he came to occupy a vessel of flesh, to defeat this sinful flesh, and to give us of his spirit that we may as well overcome the lusts of our flesh, of our members, so that we would no longer suffer death and so that we could be reconciled unto him and be with him for eternity. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. May your name be elevated and blessed and maintain us in the fear of your holy and mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen.